Hello, 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 and welcome to It's All Good. I am your host, Latavia, and back for another episode. And this week, I have a very special guest, uh, Miss Chine Carter. And um, so if this is your first time listening or watching, I want to first say welcome. Uh, this is a weekly podcast where I share my experiences through this thing called life and adulting. Although most weeks I want to return to sender, but it's just a chance for me to share with you the ups and downs, joys, and all the in-betweens of, of life and adulting is how and how I am learning to surrender and trust the process. So back to my special guest. Um, I had shared with you before, one of the things that I do to start each episode is a gratitude moment. And so that's where I take some time to share something or someone that I am grateful for. Uh, today. So as my guest, I will give you the opportunity to go first. So please let us know something or someone that you are grateful for today. Today and every day, I'm super grateful for my mother. Um, and, and as our parents get older, you kind of cherish the moments differently. So I'm beginning to cherish the moments differently with my mother. So um, yeah, that's my, that's what I'm grateful for the moments that I have with her and my daughter together because they're together um, being able to experience each other. So I'm grateful for that. That's awesome. Yes. I love that. And I, I, that is something I would say because my, my dad was in the military. So we grew up away from extended family. So I've always like any time that we got with my grandparents, I valued that so much more because it was like, I remember I love the summer because I knew at least one or two weeks every summer was going to get to see my grandparents and then my cousins and all that stuff because I didn't see them throughout the year. Um, but kind of to that point, uh, one of the, I guess one of the people I'm grateful for is one of my cousins because like I said, we didn't grow up around my extended family, but it's one of my first cousins that he's older than me, but it's like, as we've gotten older, we've gotten closer. And I've been able to develop a relationship with him. Um, and it's still not something you know, talk every day, but it's like, I appreciate that even though we didn't grow up close to in terms of proximity with, to one another, that we have been able to like get to know one another as individuals and develop that relationship. And that continues to grow in as we, you know, in this adulting thing. Right. So family is definitely important. And like you said, as we get older and just, it's interesting just watching the, the, the subtle changes. <laughs> subtle changes, the not so subtle changes. The... Right. <laughs> it's, it's not the same. It's different. It's not. It's, it is definitely different. And especially over these last years of this pandemic of that whole notion of, you know, child becomes a parent. And I've had a few moments with my parents like, hey, 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 I know hey, you all. Wait a minute. Parent. What a minute. But I need you to, some things I need you to do. Differently. Not do. Differently. Yeah. I need you to do something different. Could you please, right. please, <laughs> please. Yeah, that's right. different. <laughs> yeah, like I had to get on them because they like to go walking or running and leave phones at the house. And I'm like, hey, I need you to have something on you. There aren't pay phones like there used to be. Or at least have some identification. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. But speaking of, like I said, of changes and doing things differently, one of the reasons that I did what I wanted to have you as a guest, you know, aside from the fact, you know, we had a great time in, in Mexico together. And did, and uh, did. <laughs> and it feels, some days it feels like it was just yesterday, but other days yeah. it feels so long ago. But um, we need to but do it was that great. again. We need to get that again. You let me know when. And okay, where. I got you. I got you. <laughs> But no, but it, aside from that, like I said, one of the things that you, and I think you've been doing this probably most of your career, but I think being a bit more vocal in terms of these, the internet world um, about changing how we look at, how we talk about, and how we approach finances. Because uh, I know it's something I'm all, I like to say I would like to be aware of, but even just since I've started watching the videos and following your stuff, I've learned a lot and it has been helpful of just like, Okay, mm -hmm. gotta stop. Gotta stop talking about it. Let's actually be about it. And put right, some things right into some place. things. So, and it, you know, it's it's a work in progress. Baby steps, baby steps. Yes. So that um. So if you would just tell those listening and or watching just a little bit about you, 
um, and, and what you are doing. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this a short story. Um, <laughs> when uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. When George Floyd was mur murdered, I was feeling the feelings that we were all feeling, and I wanted to figure mm -hmm. out a way to help my people, right? Figure out what could be done. So I started an Instagram page called Empower, and it was for small businesses and to help promote them, tell them where grants were and that kind of thing. So I did that for a while, and it kind of grew, like I got a following and, and that kind of thing. Fast forward one year and somehow um, I got to talking to some of my girlfriends and we're talking about money. And I'm always the person that people call to talk about your retirement, your investments, what you're doing with, that's just who I am. But so many of them had called to talk about it that I was like, you know what? We can talk about this or we can do something about it. Let's get together and have a meeting, talk about real stuff. But like you said, I didn't want to be talking about it and not doing it. So I like gave them homework and I was like, yeah, yeah. We, what you're going to do is bring your actual finances. We're not going to have this conversation. Get it, get it in, get it in. And so, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it was going to be a real thing. Yes. So, so they had to gather paperwork. They had to get, there, there were spreadsheets involved. It, it was a thing. And so it was a month of us working through people's finances and it was my my friend so they didn't necessarily know each other but they all knew me or you know six degrees of separation or whatever and what i realized was one there are things that we're not talking about like some stuff i don't know everything but if you talk to me or someone else talks to you we are learning as we go along if we would just talk about it we could share with one another and then two we have this shame about not knowing. Um, and it, and it's like, we're too embarrassed to say, I never looked at my 401k. I never even logged into the account. I don't know what IRA is. We're just, we don't wanna say that out loud. So I was like, okay, what can I do so that we're continuously talking about this? So from the Empower Instagram page, um, it turned into Empower Financial, which then became okay. Are you right? Then Empower, Empowerment Source, which was the website, um, became Empower Financial Facebook group and YouTube channel and um, some classes that I was teaching. Um, and just, it kind of just grew. So it's holistically, I just want to talk about it. I just want us to talk about it. But right. little picture, I want people to go like, take that information and say, okay, I don't know what to do with this, that, and the third, but I'm gonna go check on that. Or, you know, piece by piece, you can do a little better. And that's, that's kind of the, the point. Okay. No, that's, that's beautiful. And that's it. And like you said, the whole list of things I want us to do better. I want us to be better. Um, and then like, you know, how can I, what can I do? And we talked about that a little bit before, but I love it. And like I said, I, I didn't know that that was your background or that was what it was, but I, I remember um, and I think it was on Instagram when you had made the post about, I got some people together and we were talking about this. So I want to share. And I was like, oh, yes. You do. Okay. I, I remember being like, darn, I wish I was still in North Carolina. <laughs> but, um, I was like, I, I want to come. But uh, yeah, me but too. No, me I think, too. <laughs> right. But I, I love it because I, I did, I had participated. Um, my church at one point had done a group and it was loosely it was supposed to be about financial peace mm -hmm. and another mr dave ramsey has some has some strong opinions we got yes yes we have some hot topics on day yeah we'll get to that right so but thankfully the person who was leading it she didn't she didn't require us to do it so she had essentially kind of taken some concepts and kind of created her own but i remember having to print out well, i think it was like three months of my bank statements and going through and it was painful. <laughs> and, it's, that, and that's the whole thing, right? You just want someone to say, go do that. Go, you, you need someone to, if you're not inclined to do that yourself, someone needs to tell you to go do that. And I think supporting each other while we go do that makes it easier to, to be like, okay, I'm gonna go do it because she's doing it and I need to know right. this stuff. <laughs> like yes. that, that part, because it's like, okay, but, and it was similar, but I think like you said, that, that group, the accountability piece. The accountability. Of like, and I think, like you said, there's definitely a lot of shame around the not knowing and, and that whole notion of ignorance is bliss. And I don't necessarily think that it's blissful. It's just, there's a certain comfort. 
It's mm. come because you're afraid. And 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 I can make a long list of the things I'm afraid of. Money just doesn't happen to be on the list for me. So, mm -hmm. you know, we get very comfortable in the things that we, we know. Let's 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 get money off of the list of things we're afraid of. Let's take that off. Even if you don't know enough, like and that's part of that's part of my Dave Ramsey issue. Um, I have Dave Ramsey issues, but it sounds so complicated when people say, you know, emergency fund, IRA, 401k, dollar cost averaging. They throw out these terms and it sounds hard. Right. It sounds more difficult than it has to be. So in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I I say things a certain kind of way. I'm going to keep saying them a certain kind of way and someone will get it. It'll it'll be fine. Right. So that no, exactly I, it, it makes perfect sense to me when you say it. So um, <laughs> and, and I take a similar approach in terms of when I'm dealing with clients, like, for, you know, from a legal standpoint, because I want to make sure you get it. I think legalese and all of the financial terms, I think it's it's antiquated and in many respects and even kind of if we're thinking of things in a larger standpoint, I think it kind of plays into the whole systemic racism piece of or even from a classist or economic standpoint. All of, of that, all of that. They put they don't want you to here. know. They don't want exactly. you to know. They don't want you to understand. And I've got a video about how the stock market kind of made itself be far away, made itself be something that people didn't have access to. And we we internalize that. We internalize that it's too complicated for you to understand. So let me go ignore it or pay way too much money to have somebody manage it for me. Like that's systemic. It is. And it and it, it's frustrating. And I can definitely understand, you know, I have fallen victim to that or fallen into that trap myself and certain things are like, wait, you know, I, I don't have the time. It's, it's, it's too much to try to go learn and understand when I'm over here trying to manage my day to day, I'm trying to get through life. Um, but also I need to set aside some time. Well, yes, okay, I could not watch a show or two to go read this. I could, but, but is that what I want? my free time. How do I want to spend it? And that's not it. And so I get it for people who are like, it's just too much. And which is, like I said, one of the reasons that I appreciate you even the more of the videos are like usually no more than 10 minutes, if that. So it's, I'm not going to be before you long. I'm not going to be before. Like the, the channel's called Five Minute Finances because I'm doing my best to keep it under five minutes. Like, because I my attention span is such that I need that in my life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that that's no, the I think it's great. So, so I guess what you said that you have a list of things that you're afraid of. Money is not one of them. So I guess how, I guess, what's a little bit of your money story, so to speak, in the sense of that that isn't <laughs> money so, is not. Yeah, I, we all have like uh how we how we got where we are right so let's start with then this is gonna age and date me but whatever my father used to be one of those people that collected pennies and we would collect pennies we would roll them up we would take them to the bank so we went to the bank every week now part of that is because my daddy liked to do different things with money and we needed to go to the bank fairly often okay. um but i spent a lot of time at the bank learning about you know how to write a deposit slip how to write out checks before i had a checking account like these things were important to him um okay. fast forward to the late 90s early 2000s when like internet banking and you started being able to trade online and i was you know early late teens early 20s i had accounts because i wasn't I, everybody else was making millions of dollars we saw it on the internet so i too could make a million dollars i lost everything it's okay i didn't have much to lose but that's it was something i was willing to try i wasn't afraid of it and so when i went to college i got a finance degree because money always interested me like that and I go back to my father because he kept two magazines in the house. My mother kept Ebony and Essence. My father kept Black Enterprise and Money Magazine. And so okay. Black Enterprise and Money Magazine were in my house from the time I could read. So these, this was normal. He normalized talking about money, reading about money, seeing people with money. Don't know how they got it. Not sure where it came from, but let me go find out. Right. Right now. Let me go find out. So... Fast forward, you get a finance degree, you learn some stuff and, you know, 
we are from where we're from. We're not afraid of hard work. So I always figured I can make the money and if I lose it, I'll just keep working. It'll be fine. And right. it's fine. So that's that. <laughs> that's that's how we got to where we are. No, that that's great. I love it. I, we had Ebony and Jet. Uh, I don't remember. I would definitely, definitely no money. Now. Money, <laughs> money. It was, and I, it was interesting the way you said, it. I do remember, I mean, it was a little kind of probably like elementary, middle school, but I do remember um, my dad being intentional about making sure we understood how it worked. Um, but I think, and I don't know that it was, I think it's more so part of how he was raised and just kind of his experience with my parents, but it was, I knew to pay my bills. Right. Uh, you know, have a little savings. But my, to my knowledge, my parents have never been big into investing. It was something I heard about and it was like, okay, I know it's something that I need to it's do. It's a thing. It's a thing. Right. It's a thing that people do. There are people that Maybe know about us. the thing. I don't know anybody who's doing that thing, but. Right. And right. then it was, like you said, okay, I'm going to just work. I'm going to work. And then when I started working and I got a job where there was a for you know a retirement account okay well I need to put some, they said I got to put some money in and well, let me go it. do what they said that's cool yep and it has been a lot of that and it hasn't been it wasn't until like in recent years where I started thinking of I wanted of wanting to make the transition to being you know the entrepreneurship world where nobody is matching anything no. <laughs> um, yeah. where it's like okay no we need to for me it's like okay I need to be more intentional about how I'm saving and where the money's going to because yes I can I can always work I don't question my ability to make money but I also recognize I don't want to have to work all the time for the rest of 20 30 I don't want to have to work I want to get to that point where I do have you know the residual income and my money working for me all these all things of that all of the things about. that you it's right. Like, oh, okay. Now I want that for me. Can man. I get I that? that? Can I get? Yes. Like so. <laughs> it's like yes, gonna... make that. I want that to be my reality. And one of the things too, and if those of you listening and watching, you have not, please make sure that you go check out empowerment, um, financial planning. Um, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, or or YouTube, like said, she said the videos are short, and it's. It's not just telling you what to do, but there's all a, also a lot of practical steps, which I value because <laughs> in one of the videos you said there's a lot of lists and there's a lot of things and they tell you you should invest, but they don't tell you how. And it's like, go invest your money. Thank you. Where do I do that at? Walmart, do I, where, like, where do they do that? <laughs> where does that happen? Right. <laughs> like right. what is that that missy song like where they do that where, where they do that, that where they where do i go to you know food line where are we doing this how does this happen so yes i and 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 i uh, back to your systemic i feel like that's on purpose i feel like we're not saying the words because you don't really want us to know the words exactly it, it it's <laughs> some days when i really sit and think about it it's so it's so frustrating that it can become paralyzing yeah. of there's just so much and and similar when you mentioned George Floyd and when he was murdered and I think but shortly before that it was a mo finding out about a mob finding out about mob. right it was it was one like in a phrase phase of like February to like May we would just kept, kept getting hit just it was yeah. hit after hit I remember I think shortly after finding out about George I remember like just being at home just crying <laughs> and I remember like calling all the different men that I knew like are you, are you okay, okay? Yes. yes I'm calling men on the men. phone are you okay are you all right you want to talk and they're on the phone like yeah I'm good what is what's going on and like I call my dad he's like why are you crying I just I don't and you don't know so what to weird. do with it this was the first time it had happened no but it was just it was so overwhelming and I think the fact that we were in the thick of the pandemic didn't help but it was just in that that year, it was like, okay, I felt as though I had become apathetic because there was so much. And it's like, okay, I can't change everything. I can't, I can't right. undo what's been done, what's in my power, what's in my control to do. And, so and I, that, that part of it kind of hit me. Like, 
I don't know what an influencer is. I'm not really sure. But what I know is that <laughs> is that people follow me on Instagram, right? So what can I say to people to make things better for them? Because I don't know what to do in this moment where we're all hurting. So what can I use that I have to help people? And this is where exactly. that's how that ended up. No, yeah. And, and I think it, I feel like I've heard a saying, but you know, the whole, it, it takes one, if you reach one person, if you can change one person's life, then you've made a difference. All those different all things. Those but things. I've, um, I'm starting to, I guess I'm starting to buy into that more in the sense of, like you said, I have no interest in being an influencer per se, because that just sounds like a lot of work. It does, it, <laughs> and it sounds like people, other people do that. I don't know who those people are or how they do it. But <laughs> it's, it's like, that just sounds like a little bit more responsibility than I don't want to add more to what I already have. So influencers, by all means, y'all got it. I'm grateful for it. It's needed. It's a great revenue stream, I understand. The job. Um, yes. Yes, but it's still a job. But what me, little Latavia, can do <laughs> is, and one of the things that I, I, I've, I guess I've discovered is a part of what I believe is a part of my purpose is, is starting a conversation, having the conversation, like you were saying with the friends of like, hey, we're talking about it. Okay, let's let's talk about let's it. Bring this conversation. Time. Yeah, let's keep talking about it. And as as you mentioned, I don't know about this, but you might know about it. Or even if we don't, if we keep talking about it. We can go find out, which is what happened. We would talk about things and my experiences are 100% different than everybody else's. So the things that you know about, I, I may not know about, but that makes me better because I got to go research what you just said. Like it, it's, we are better together. We really are. Definitely. The whole, you know, iron sharpening iron. It's iron, yes it's it's true and i'm like oh the older i get these cliches there's like they more than just words it's like, they oh. actually know what they're talking about that's the only thing about them right i was like oh okay i see what you i see what you were doing you, there i see that you weren't just random you weren't just saying out random words to me <laughs> okay yep this, this yeah, is so i guess so to that point of having the conversation so like I said, you all need to definitely go listen to the videos because she's put the information out there. Um, but for someone who, you know, who's being stubborn and oh. is not going to go watch just yet or is going to take a little while, like, I guess like what is something that you would say to someone who is trying to get started but maybe feeling overwhelmed or confused about how to get started? So I have something that I repeat in all the videos. You're going to hear it every time. Figure out what you make figure out what you spend and figure out what you owe. It is so very simple. If it if you are a person that has a bank account and you spend all your money out of the bank account, then you need to go pull your statements. If you have a credit card that you're using, you need to go pull your figure out what you're spending. Figure out what you make and match them together. So in the month of February, I made this, I spent this. The idea is to figure out if there's a difference. Are you spending more than you're making? That simple exercise, like just do it. <laughs> it hurts a little bit, particularly mm -hmm. if you're not good at keeping track of what you're spending. Um, and so there are ways to do that. There are apps, there are spreadsheets. I, I, some of that depends on your personality, but the act of going to figure out what you made and comparing it to what you spend is going to open your eyes in a way that will put you on a path one way or another. Either you will never do it again. You will just, <laughs> you'll just be like, like you know what, mm -hmm, this, too much. I this too much. I just, too much. I'll just live in this world of not knowing. I just don't want to know. And I think some people get there. Like I don't, I, and I also know that some people say, I make a good salary or I earn good money. I don't need to do this. I don't need right. to, to do that. Well, what it should do is show you how much should be left as a difference. Because when you say you want to invest, you say you want to travel, you say you want to buy a home. If you don't have a difference between what you make and what you spend, you don't have any room to do all those other big things that you're talking about. So, um, yes, you may be making good money, but if you are spending more than what you are making in actual dollars, then you are not doing what you think you're doing. So for anybody trying to get started um, and if you're feeling brave, if you're feeling real brave, 
<laughs> feeling it in your spirit. There is an app called the Mint app, and I recommend it because it links into your bank account and it keeps track of what you're spending. And when you start going over, it sends you these nasty little text messages that's like, girl, girl. Um, so yeah, there are other apps, but that's just the one I'm familiar with. If you're feeling brave. I created a Mint account years ago and I don't even use it anymore, but I promise you, I think earlier this year, I got an email from them saying something about my account. And I'm like, excuse you. But <laughs> I it, haven't been... I haven't been using you in years, but mint yeah, is disrespectful. Use... Mint is real disrespectful. I think that's part of why I stopped using it. Excuse me. <laughs> that's I why know what I, I told you. I you gotta be to brave. Leave me alone. <laughs> You gotta, exactly. you gotta be brave because it's gonna email you, it's gonna text you, it's gonna send you a little push notification. It's all in your business. It's real in your business. It's like one of them. Like, yeah, I said hold me accountable, but not like this. I didn't mean it. I, I wasn't exactly. That it sounded good when I said it. <laughs> no, I, another one that I have, I have used is and it's an app. Or oh, they have a website and an app. It's you need a budget. Yes, but that's that one's another one. Free. Right. So you and, right. definitely have to be serious <laughs> when you get ready to use it. But I did I did it for a little while. Um, and I did like in terms of the the setup of it forcing me to actually give what is it, give every dollar a job or assign every dollar. It wasn't as ideal for me at the time because I was get or I just didn't know how to fix the app to adjust because I was getting paid by a monthly but it was like a monthly setup and right so it always looked like i was doing off, the wrong thing like, yeah no, it's just the money hasn't hit yet but it's i'm coming. planning for it so it was like that was why i ended up so i was like i need you to work with me with the way i'm getting this is the way the money comes in so yes there's gonna be a couple days where it looks like i overspent but but I that's kind it. of that's another thing like people try these different methods of whatever you need a budget <laughs> mint spreadsheets whatever you got to find which one works for you because it's the only one that you're going to hold yourself accountable with right you're not going if it's difficult if it doesn't fit if it's not easy for you to get to if it causes your phone to shut down you are not going to use it oh, listen some of us be rocking some very old phones and it can't handle all that <laughs> Okay, so right. do what's going to actually work for your life, um, if, because anything that frustrates you is you're not going to stick with it. So don't fool yourself and be like, yeah, let me download this app and then never look at it. Don't don't do that to yourself. That That's so true. And as you said that, I thought about hair and the process of hair, because I'm just thinking like the last time I saw you, our hair was, was different lengths. <laughs> <laughs> But even in that, like, it made me think of the whole concept of, I remember when I first went natural, it was literally that whole trial and error process of, well, this product, there's one person says this product, they said this, well, no, no, uh, Kinky Curly, Carol's Daughters. Girl, uh, all that, of this, I had a, my We own. all have that same, we're not going to talk about natural hair, we all have that same cabinet <laughs> over there with yes. every product that anybody and else. All of them, like, me in a beauty supply store, I'd go in there and you'd think I was in the grocery store or a mall, like just going, I don't know, well, maybe this might work. Let me try it. Thankfully I have been delivered. I have found what works for me. It's working for you. Yes, that's working for you. That's working for you. And even, and I, like, I have very limited or minimal products now because I have found what works for me and I stick to it. And so I think, like I said, you said it, that just kind of clicked, but it's, it's the same thing of it's finding the same concept. that thing that works for you even, you know, that whole exercise, eating right thing that I'm still working on that one, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother, that's a different episode on a different day. Yes. But speaking of which I saw that, or have been seeing that you took up cycling. Yes. How was yes. that going? Yes. So what happened was in all <laughs> things, in all things, no matter what it is, it comes down to money. What happened was I went and bought a bike and somebody told me what a good bike was. So I went and bought it. It was $500, $500. So due to the cost of that bike, I was like, I'm going to have to ride every day of my life. From the, for the, I have to ride forever now. I cannot stop ever. I must always ride. And so that $500 got me on the bike like all last year. Like I... 
it doesn't matter. I'm going, I'm going to ride this bike. Now it ended up being fun. It ended up being mm -hmm. like, I found a sisterhood of women that were doing it. Black girls do bike and they have yeah. different chapters and I ride with them as much as possible. But it all started with their $500 bike because <laughs> what I'm not okay, about I didn't to do, this money. <laughs> what I'm not about to do is waste this money. That's what we're not about to do. So that that's how that um, actually happened. Yeah, I, I love it. I, yeah, I started in 2020. I have fallen off. I'm not going to lie. You need but a like group. 2020, I was going strong. And I had connect. Well, I, there is a Black Girls Do Bike group in D.C. Um, and so like 2020, uh, I had gotten, it was part of, okay, I got to get out this house. Right. And they said, if I'm outside, I'm okay. So okay, well, let me go outside. outside. And that was like, it became my outlet. And so I started doing a lot of the trails. I did a couple things with Black Girls Do Bike. And then... I had moved back to North Carolina for a little bit. So since I got back, I haven't been, but I'm looking forward to this weather deciding what it, season it really wants to be in. It's working on it. It's working on it. It's, yeah. it's, it's so, gonna. You know, I, and it's interesting. You said it was because you bought the $500 bike. I have not bought the $500 bike yet. It's because, motivational. It's motivational. And, and I, I think I might because, but that was the thing because I ended up getting somebody knew somebody. So I got a bike for like $60, but it, it turns out being a good one. But I kept saying to myself, I need to actually ride this and use this before, before I go. So I can justify spending real money on it because I don't want to go spend real actual money, money and then not do it. Then, right. So I, I do feel like I have. I feel like I'm ready for a new one because my it's been good to me, but it is older. And okay. um, yeah, you can you like can upgrade harder. Than, yeah, it's like I feel like I'll be working a little harder than I need to. Sometimes. And we yeah we decline that we do decline that. Yeah. So, but no, but I I love how even that and I think in one of your videos you talked about like as you got into it even that of the figuring out the helmet the seat the do you get the the bike shoe like the cycling shoes where you clip in and clip out I'm not there yet um the clothes <laughs> the the lights all those different things but even that because I learned it can get expensive if, if I, really I too did not know this I I did not realize this had I known this maybe I wouldn't have chosen this but <laughs> right but no, and it's, but even that, cause that was for me too. I was like, okay, I like all these things, especially when I learned about black girls do bike and they're like, oh, I can order the shorts and the, the bike yes, shirt and they so I can match. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay, wait a minute. I got to that cost money that though. plan for this because, and then the, yeah. like the, um, like the unitard of the one piece. The, the, the bibs. The I haven't even got, I haven't gotten there in my life yet. Like it's, and and I say this about money too, is levels to this, right? Like so 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 you can't jump in like, let me go buy this fifteen hundred dollar bike because you don't know what to do with it. Like you you don't know what to do with that. So there's no reason for that. Start where you can start. Figure out what you're spending. Figure out what you owe. Maybe put a little more to your four oh one K. That's that's a level. Like be okay. Now I'm all clipped in, my shoes are fancy, like I'm I'm out here just whoo. Just ooh. Oh, you you on the clip in level? I'm not. There. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, that the clip ins make me nervous. <laughs> See, that was money too. What happened was, <laughs> I needed some shoes, and I knew at some point I was going to want to clip in. I was like, well, I'm not buying two pair of shoes, so I'm a, <laughs> like, essentially everything about me comes down to how much is this going to cost me? I really need to know. No, I think that's great. I'm trying to. I've gotten better. And I would say on my journey, I have recognized that I enjoy convenience. Yes. And I often pay for convenience, even yes. when I know <laughs> I could spend less. <laughs> but there's certain things where I'm like, you know what? It's worth it. I'm and it is. It. And it is. But you have to know where your levels are, right? Like, can I afford this? Is, is it cool if I go ahead and indulge so that I don't have to do that thing? I need, I need somebody for that. It's okay. Just you gotta just know, have an awareness. That the that part awareness is big. Um, and I would say, like I said, I'm not where I want to be, but I can honestly say now, like learning myself and accepting that about myself, 
yes, there are times I'm going to spend a little extra because I want the convenience. And then there are times where I realize as much as I want the convenience, that's not in the budget yet. So we will be doing some DIY to, but that, to get where that's we That's the whole go. thing. Know you, right? Know you. Because I make decisions sometimes that are very extreme, leaning into my cheaper side, right? Well, mm -hmm. you got to, <laughs> I have to reprogram myself not to be cheap, like you, not even cheap, but like there are things worth paying for. You should pay for them. Um, but you have to know your own triggers. You really do have to know what's causing you to make the money decisions you're making. And as long as you're cool with that, like I'm not buying this, I'm not buying these shoes because I'm having a bad day. Like that's not okay. Let's Let's work through <laughs> what the trigger is here so we don't make a bad decision based on something we didn't mean to. But sometimes I just want the shoes. I'm okay with that. Exactly. And and then and it was interesting. My um I was having a conversation with my sister. She's planning a wedding. And it was something that she wanted. And initially it was it was it was gonna take the budget over, but it was she realized she really wanted it. So she was like, Okay, I'm gonna have to pick up some extra stuff or do some extra things here for this temporary period of time to make sure I get what I want. I'm like, well, That's if you're comfortable it. with it, then, hey, there there it goes. Like, That's it. You have to cut back over here. And that was one thing I did learn before with doing the you need a budget piece. It was like, hold up, this this pocket is empty. Right. So, so where are you um, going to get this from? Where Where is that coming from? We, who we, you know, not necessarily robbing Peter to pay Paul, but essentially. It's Peter and Paul in the room. Where, where who got it? Because we need it over right. here. And, and that, um, and I tried the, I, mean, I need to stop blaming the pandemic, but it did throw me off. I feel like I was doing good with like my cash method and the envelopes uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but then it was, well, we're not taking cash. Everything has to be by card. Oh, oh okay. Well, all right. So and then I'm you have to regroup. To yeah, you got to regroup, figure out what works for the time you're in right now. For me, I use everything on a card because I want to track everything. I want to see everything. Gotcha. And when I have cash... I don't know where my cash, I have no, I have no idea where my cash goes. It's magical. It's, when you break a 20, it seems to just, it disappears. It just, it's, it's, so I don't carry cash for that reason because something happens to it. But if I see on a card, I'm, I, you know, there are differing views about what you're supposed to do with that. But when I see it on a card, I'm like, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, that's what you're doing. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm good with the car because I can try. Oh, wait, hold up. This is that is, what we? Why did you do? Okay, we not doing that anymore. For me, <laughs> I'm always like, oh, you just balling out at lunch, huh? You just eating lunch everywhere, huh? Just, <laughs> just. Like, oh, we was real hungry that day. Were, were you just, hungry? That's exactly. Indecisive. Right. What did we eat? That is, and that is for me, a lot of times I don't allow myself to order out because I'm not sure. And then I end up, why did I spend $20 on one meal? What is and where are the leftovers? Like, I don't even feel bad if I'm going to eat something later, but what? Now, that is one thing I'll do I, to, to justify in my mind. I was like, oh, that's two meals. That's two meals. Yes. I'm like, okay, I can make this stretch at least two meals. Or if I get it tonight, I'm going to have it for lunch tomorrow. Or it's fine. It's stretch, fine. Like, especially if I order Chinese food, you know, I can stretch that two, three days. You can make that do what it do. You can. You yeah. can't. So then I'm like, okay, I feel a little better. But yeah, on those ones where the, there are no leftovers, I'm like, oh. Or go to the grocery store and come up with $40 worth of who knows, and then you don't have food to eat? Like, how does that happen? What did I get? Anyway. What did I, oh, all this junk food. Oh, okay. Why are there four bags of chips? Why is that? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's so many. It's so it's so many levels. It's so it it is it is so many levels, and I think big picture, you have to be ready to face it. Whatever your it is, it's the mm -hmm. grocery store, it's the ordering out, it's the five hundred dollar bikes. Whatever your it is, you need to face it and 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 be okay with it. And you can only do that by actually looking at the numbers. That part, as we come back to it, the numbers. The number, but it what they say numbers don't lie, they don't. Unless they you don't. got a shady person, um. <laughs> okay. We're not talking about no, we're not doing that. 
we're talking about actual numbers that you actually right. can see. They don't lie. And when you look at what you brought in in a month and what you spend, one of those numbers needs to be bigger than the other. And yeah. 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 So when, so once we've done that, right. I figured out what I'm spending, what I'm making, and hopefully there is some difference, a, a positive. Yeah, a difference. positive. Yeah, not a, <laughs> yes, that's true. A positive difference. There's some surplus. Um, so, you know, if we have debt, obviously that's part of what we're spending, but like if it is, looking to start saving or investing. And I know we are not following the Dave Ramsey train of you got to pay off all your debt first before you can save, because that is frustrating and depressing, at least for me. So I'm going to go into my little Dave Ramsey thing. He will make you, make you sad. He will make you sad. He will make you feel like you're not good enough and you're not doing the right things and everything is bad. And while his advice may be practical. I, I don't dispute that it is practical and that it has financially, it makes sense. We are not practical financial people. We are emotional people. So his advice, in my opinion, brings people down that are already down. And it, it it's just demeaning to me, particularly when you say you have to pay off all your debt before you can begin to invest. And the reason I'm it just brings chills is because the stock market good year you can get 17 percent interest i mean a 17 percent return if you have a credit card at five percent interest we won't even talk about what i think about credit cards but like you shouldn't you shouldn't stop one to do the other in my opinion you could make more investing than you could by paying this off depending on what you got going on that credit card but it doesn't have to be either or. Now, I will say that he gives discipline to people who don't have discipline. So if you know you're not disciplined, then his method is probably the best thing for you because it gives you rules that you can't break and then you get to a certain place. Okay. But being that we're emotional creatures and being that some of us has have less, less time than others. We're talking to a 50 year old woman, she need to be investing today. I don't know what's... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, ain't, you, ain't got time. you ain't got that kind of time. You need today. So, you know, I understand he's trying to talk to the masses. So he his you know, he's got to make advice and it's got to stick. But this idea that his be all and end all rules are going to get you somewhere. Hmm. I got feelings. Yeah. I, I've never formally done like the full financial piece. I know enough people who have done it. I've read different things. And every time I hear about it, it just... Hmm. I just get sad because I'm like, especially yeah. because I have student loan debt, like that is the equivalent of a house or a mortgage. Um, and so when I, when I, for me, when I talk about paying off my debt, that is not in, in the number, way. but it's for him, it number. would be right. Like if you followed his rules strictly, it would be. And to me now, this is going to sound bad. Student loan is the last thing in the world I'm going to pay off. Last thing, like I'm gonna pay off everyone in the world before I pay off student loans. And I'm going to, and so you asked about the next step. For me, the next step is to figure out my priority, which is, am I trying to buy a house next? Am I trying to save for college? Do I, am I focused on my retirement? Once you figure out what you make and what you spend, um, and you know a little bit about what you owe, then you should be focused on whatever your next move is, house, um, retirement, uh, travel, whatever that is, and putting your efforts into that in a systematic way, but yeah. also not leaning into, well, I got to pay off all this debt before I can take that trip. Or I, I mean, we're just, we're, we're emotional creatures. And if you lean too far into what the rules say, you'll be sad. You'll be real sad. Mm -hmm. It don't, it, it happens real quick, but I guess to that point, if you figured out that you, if, if investing or the retirement account is one, are there in, and I know that there's, there's several and it, it's going to depend on, you know, each person, but are there any that you think are, I guess, in your experience that you would recommend or think are better than others, especially for someone who may not have a whole lot to invest, but they're just getting started. So I always, I always recommend fidelity accounts. Um, and if you're talking about retirement, that's an IRA. You can open an IRA no matter who you are, as long as you've worked 
in that year. If you have income, you can have an IRA. Um, and that's retirement. Um, that's a retirement account. Uh, but if you have a if you're working for somebody and they have a 401k whether they match it or not i would start with the employer's 401k um, because they have typically sometimes they're not great but typically they have better offerings and it's tax protected so if you have a 401k start there look for um, um, low cost funds that they have in your in your 401k start putting money there and then if you're you want to do more you want to go above and beyond uh, fidelity ira is where i would start um, because 401k means you're protecting it from taxes but you can't really touch it right you, you got to leave that alone <laughs> same thing with the ira you got to leave that alone and that's kind of another point if you don't have a by the time you get to the I'm ready to do the 401k, I'm ready to do the IRA, I'm, I'm making the assumption that you've got some money saved away for a rainy day because you should not be touching your retirement money when the car breaks down. Right. You should not be touching your IRA when, you know, you, you want to take a trip. That is not what it's for. So you should have stashes of money for those type of things. But once you've gotten that together, getting the retirement and I, I focus on 401k because I'm about not paying taxes. So if you're making money and you're putting in your 401k, it's protecting them from taxes. In addition to it being protected when you, when you pull it out. No. Okay. That, thank you. That, that is, I think that helps me and I'm sure I'm, I'm certain that it helps <laughs> others listening, but, and I'm familiar with fidelity because my previous employers had accounts um, that was who my uh, a lot of my accounts were with were with Fidelity, um, and I feel like they're even from when I was an employee, I felt like they were it was user friendly, and I always felt exactly. like from a customer from a customer service standpoint, I've always been able to get someone on the phone if the website was easy easy to navigate or someone was quick to respond with a right. question, right? Like, you know, if I had a question about something, so I think that's that's good. and. If you have an old 401k from an older job, they make it super easy to roll that into an IRA at Fidelity. Like I've, I've done that a couple of times and that's super easy. So I find that they make it just seamless to be able to do and explain. The people are nice when you call Fidelity and I call a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. yeah, sometimes I'm a little surprised. Like, oh, well, right. Like you're being, how's your day going? Right. And, and they do. They ask you, so how, how's the weather where you are? I'm like, well, let's talk about that. They don't really mean exactly. to talk about that, but it's fine. They have that Chick Fil A uh, spirit. I love it. So I I appreciate it. Okay, well, yeah. So this, uh, pardon me, feel like we could definitely go on and on. We could. We about could about this, but I do appreciate you making the decision and in, in um to not be selfish with the knowledge that you have uh, because there's a lot. It's, it's, you could very easily, okay, yeah, me and mine, we're good. And I feel like that circle, we're good. Right. We don't want that. We, we as a community should not want that. Our circle should be bigger than the people I know and the people I love. Let's, let's, so I'm telling everybody that has heard from me, go tell somebody else what you just heard. Like if it helped you, go tell somebody so we can start talking about this. So yes, I appreciate that. No, yes, I, I love it. And and one thing I do want to add, because you mentioned tax, you know, it protects the money from taxes. This is a larger conversation, <laughs> but part of that, and as you are, you know, we're getting to that point where we figure out what we have, what we're going, and we can save. Even if you are not able to reap the benefits of the money that you are saving and investing, when you die, because we are all going to die at some point. What? Yeah, it's it's gonna happen. Hopefully, after we've had you know a long, long, a nice life. long life. Yes. But one thing that I, I feel like, you know, as they say in church, I would be remiss. I would be I remiss. Not say, um, a part of this planning that you're doing with your finances, you also need to do that in the sense of a will, a trust. Um, power of attorney, medical power of attorney or advanced directive, because one thing that this states or this country is going to do is get their money. So if Amen. you, do not, and I tell people this all the time, if you don't have a plan, 
the state has one for you. Every state in these United States <laughs> has a plan for what happens when you die. So if you, innate, we have the, we have the right and the privileged opportunity, whatever you want to call it, to create a plan. You do not have to be wealthy. You do not have to have millions and billions or thousands to make a plan. Even if you feel like I don't have, I, you, I wasn't able to save, I don't have a retirement account, but I have a house or I have, you know, I don't know, you got a Winnebago, whatever. You have something that is of value to you and your family, make a plan so that it can be passed and stay in your family because that is another way that we create and maintain generational wealth. And it does start with having the, that conversation with self about, well, what do I have? Do I have a surplus to set something aside? Um, but also, I would hate that you get all this together. And then and when you die, it was for naught because, and not to say that your family wouldn't get any of it because in that plan that the state has, there is a portion that goes to your heirs, you know, your spouse or your children. But sometimes as much as 50%, it, it gets up there, the state is going to take. So if there is money, they're going to take. If there's property, they might force, you might be forced to sell it so that you can pay off certain things. So like I said, that is another conversation. But I just, as, as you all are thinking about having these hard conversations with yourself, add that to the list. <laughs> Absolutely. Add that to the list. What you make, what you spend, and where's your will? Where is it? Get that. And, and the will can be simple. It does not have to be long and convoluted despite what some might tell you or make you believe. It does not have to be long. Um, you do wanna make sure that it is done in accordance with your state's requirements so that it will be recognized. Um, and even more, you know, some uh, more people are starting to use trust or create trust um, because that's another way to avoid some of the taxes um, and protect assets in a different way. but. So because you said that, let me just say this. Um, some of us have been divorced. We've had um, people pass away. We've had things that have happened in your life that makes your life situation messy. If you don't do the thing to put your messiness in order, it, it gets messy at, when you're gone, right? So if you've yeah. been divorced or people have passed away or whatever's happened and things are not straight before you go, you're going to create a mess for people behind you and um, shout out to the divorce days, but you might want to check your paperwork. Um, Not might, please do. <laughs> please do. I wasn't alive for it, but there are stories in my family where my grandfather was a rolling stone and he thought it was a good idea to go marry someone else, but he forgot to divorce my grandmother. Do you see? All I'm saying is stuff gets messy and you don't want people fighting in places they don't need to be fighting. So don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Exactly. And the same, even if you have a will, if, if you have your retirement accounts or your investment accounts, update your beneficiaries because they will not care if you divorced John they don't care. 20 they years don't. ago. They do not. If John's name is still listed as a beneficiary, when you pass away, John is getting that money. And this is a whole- Legally be his. This is a whole conversation that we could have a whole, uh, this, this could go on, but what she said, do that, please, <laughs> please, please. Yes. So, so yes, we might have, you might have to come back. So we yeah, we might have to do that. We have to do that on a different, that's a different story altogether. Yes. But. Yes. But, but thank you again. Um, like I said, thank you for not being selfish. Thank you for choosing to spend your free time sharing with others, making the videos. Cause I know making videos, that's a whole nother job in and of itself. <laughs> But yeah. trust me, I see you. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. You see me. You see me. Thank yeah, you. We see each other. Um, you know, the edits and all, making sure it's concise, but you're giving the, you're giving effective information in a, in a quick way. Um, so yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I have definitely benefited and I know that those listening and watching will also benefit. So please continue doing what you're doing. 
Thank you. Um, and if there's anything that I can do to be supportive, let me know. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna start putting some of these things into practice. I'm gonna regroup. I've been you got here it. in the wilderness. You got this. These last few years. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so thank you again. If you would, I know we talked about it a bit at the beginning, but if you would just let everyone know where they can find you or find the videos and the information. Absolutely. On the Facebook uh, community, it's Empower Financial. Um, just look us up on Facebook or you can go to the website empowermentsource.org. And that's where you can I'll find I'll be sure to include that in the show notes so that people can see that and there's links to those pages as well. But thank uh -huh. you again. And it's been said a few times while we've been talking, but it is, it's a process. You got to start somewhere, but regardless of what it looks like or feels like, and as much as it might hurt when you're getting started, it is, it is a part of the process. It's a part of your journey. Um, and in, in the end, it is all going to work out for your good. So please keep going. Chine, thank you again. And for those of you listening, thank you. If you have not already, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what, where in your journey you are or what are some things that you are trying to get started or how we might be able to be supportive of one another. But thank you all. And until next time.